said, look, you guys, you've done well. We've done well. We're consultants. We measure these things. You guys are doing well. He said, the only thing is, you have a vision that brought you up to this point. But you said we should discuss 20 years' time. 20 years will be different from now. So let, me, let me give you some ideas from some of the things we checked out from the survey. Now, your target is the younger generation. We said yes. Where do you meet them best? We said on the internet. What do they like? What gets their attention? We said entertainment. They're fine. Your choir is very good, right? We said yes. Do you have any of the clips of their songs? on the home page of your website? We said no. Do you have a drama department? We said yes. They do professional skits. We said fine. Do you have any of them on your home page? We said no. We said, so if they don't visit your website, can't you see why? You're already going off course, off tangent, from the generation you say you are trying to reach. As he said that, we brought in two teenagers into the meeting along with that. One of them, a young lady, said, sir, sir, I've been telling them, I've been telling pastor so-and-so that they should do this. He said, you see what I'm talking about? Can you please help me to get more of these teenagers into this meeting? You guys started this church when you were in your 20s, you are in your 40s now. 20 years' time, you'll be in your 60s. The plan you are making, it's not you that will execute it. Can you see why you are not understanding it? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a sense in which you appreciate the older generation for the work they have done okay and you get to you know position things for them because even they don't want to see the investments they have done go to waste When you are smart and you are an Eli, it gets to a point where you realize you need to listen to someone. Because if God is going to discuss what he's going to do in 30 or 40 years' time, even you should accept he won't discuss it with you because it will be a waste. Okay. I said to our church members some few weeks back, I said, don't use what is happening to Saul as a measure of what God is doing. I, I was just drawing an illustration from 1 Samuel 16. Don't use what is happening to Saul as an illustration of what God is doing in the nation. Even though what's happening around Saul is what you will hear on the news. I said, if you want to really track where the country is going, look for David. Because Saul's time. Yeah. So, we need to appreciate the older generation for the sacrifices they have made, and we need to also work with the younger generation, pray with them, ensure they capture the vision because they're the ones God's going to speak to. The future is in their heart. Uh, talking about contamination, I would not say no, not contamination. God's revelation is progressive. So it's different phases of the same thing. Um, so there, are, there is a sense in which you need to bring the two together because the younger generation needs to build on some of the values, some of the vision foundation that was laid. And there are some scenarios in which you need to separate them because the older generation thinks the only way to do it is the way they have done it that they have proven that has worked. So there is a sense in which the younger people need to find space of their own you know, to find full expression without somebody being there to call them crazy because of their hairstyles and their clothes. Sorry, I will stop there. I hope you will invite me the next time. <laughs> Dr. Chand has offered to be my bodyguard. <laughs> the, the third one, 
when you allow all kinds of people like we described, the paralytics and the epileptics and all of that, then the question was, when should you know enough is enough and send them away? <laughs> you shouldn't have plans to send them away. <laughs> you should have plans for their transformation. You know what? If God didn't have any plans for their lives, he would not have sent them to you. God has a destiny for every single one. But this is what I would say that helped our church. The average pastor assumes that everybody in their church is at the same level of maturity and same level of commitment to their vision. You must have a system that separates people at levels of commitment. And it was our training system that helped us to do that. Some people are still window shopping. Just window shopping. So that uh, when you don't classify people like that, sometimes you make a call for commitment to everybody and you are surprised only few people responded. Because it's only few people that have been matured, grown, raised to the highest level of commitment. You are the level of sacrifice. You have a church full of people that are looking for what to get from God. So you make a heavy demand of commitment and you, are, you realize only a few of them responded. Okay? So don't expect too much from them when they come in. Allow them to behave like people that are not saved. Allow them. Don't insist that they must change before they come in. Jesus never asked people to do that kind of a thing. Let them come in. Then first level of training, how to be born again, what that implies, how to grow spiritually, and so on. They do that, then they're admitted into registered membership. That's our structure. And to be a registered member in our church, you must have done a membership class, and you must belong to a small group. A church of 30,000 people, what's the point in you coming? We count you as a number. Nobody knows your address. And then you go out there, claim you are our member, and you are doing crazy things. So you've got to do a membership class and belong to a small group so that someone not far from your house knows your address and we can track you. Then the next place we ask you to go is our maturity class. And all we teach there is how to grow spiritually on your own, how to read the Bible with concordance, Bible dictionary, and all that, different translations how to do spiritual warfare, how to pray, and so on, stewardship. The third level of training is ministry. Our objective at that point is built on our knowledge of human nature. The average human being is selfish, self-centered. The ministry class is the place where we turn the focus outside. People have needs, and you won't find the definition of success until you focus on meeting people's needs and solving their problems. We take them out to hospitals, take them out to hospices, confront them with human problems, and then teach. We run classes on them, tests. They find out their ministry gifts, find out their skill sets, find out their whatever. Run those tests, discover what they have, their uniqueness. We discuss the anointing, how they're empowered by the Holy Spirit to solve problems. The last level of training is on soul winning. So, and then you must, you've got to do the first two levels before you can be, we admit you into our workforce, and then you must have done the whole thing before you can be a small group leader. So, we, we know what proportions of the church are at different levels of commitment. There are things we will discuss at our strategic leadership conference that I will not see on the pulpit to the whole church. Okay? If you stratify them like that, then you find out there's nobody you need to send away. Some people are going to stay at the lowest level. Some people are going to be window shopping for four years or five years before they make up their mind. There's no point running them away. Keep them there. Let them keep hearing the word. It's because you're expecting too much from them. That's why you're getting frustrated. If they choose window shopping, let them stay there. But you will, you, you will observe God won't fail and his word can't fail. Many people will move to higher levels of commitment. Then you give them the responsibilities that you can give them at that level. I'll stop with that. Please let us appreciate Reverend Sam Adeyemi. Come on, we can do better. Come on, let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Rise to your feet and thank God for the gift of God in his life. He has indeed been a blessing to us. Come on, come on, we can do better. We can do better. We can do better.
Thank you so much, sir. We wish we had more time to spend with you. Praise the Lord. At this time, I want us to just, you know, stretch our hands towards Reverend Sam and ask that God will fill him up again. He has, give, he has released himself and he has, virtue has gone out of him. I want us to ask that God will replenish virtue unto him. I want us to ask that God himself will lay his hand upon him. That the, the wisdom and revelation that he has right now will go even to another level. That he will continue to impact the world for Jesus. That generations to come will be impacted by him. That everyone who comes across him will never leave without a deposit. That God will continue to cause his oil to be fresh in the mighty name of Jesus. That concerning his own ministry, his vision will not grow dim. I want us to pray for him, that God will protect him and his family, that in his going out, he will continually be blessed. In his coming in, he will continually be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son today and for this session. We thank you for everyone who has attended. Lord God Almighty, we know we have many questions. Lord, the spirit of revelation is already in us. Oh, Lord, we ask that you use it for us, oh God, for our good and for the good of your church. In the mighty name of Jesus. As for your son, be with him in the name of Jesus. Let your wisdom and your revelation continue to be made new unto him every day in the name of Jesus. Be with his ministry. Strengthen his arms in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree and declare he will not fail. He will not fall and neither will he ever falter in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah.